So as it says on the label, this is the standard Oscar Schmidt Auto Harp fine tuning system. So this is what it looks like after I took it out of the box that came through the post. So this is the entire contents. What I'm doing here is that I'm marking out the string numbers on the masking tape so that I can attach them to the old strings before I remove them. They do recommend that one should be using new auto harp strings. However, I've decided to opt for the cheap option and I've decided to reuse the old existing strings. So here I am marking out the string numbers on the masking tape to attach onto the strings before I remove them. What I would advise is that if you are reusing the old strings when you are installing fine tuners on the auto harp, then do be prepared for the old strings to snap. So what I'm doing here is that I'm writing the numbers 1 to 36 for each of the strings on the auto harp on the masking tape. And then once I've done that, I'll be cutting out these little pieces of masking tape into little rectangles so that I can simply stick them onto the strings. So what I'm doing here is that I'm just cutting out the numbers into little rectangles. And as you can tell, I have labeled all the chord bars so we are now ready to remove the strings. So here, in order to remove the strings, I am turning the tuning pin anti-clockwise. And now I am using my hands to unwind the string from the tuning pin. Notice that every string has a hook at the end. So in order to be able to remove the string and pull it through the hole, then we need to straighten that hook using a needle wrench like this. So once again, I'm turning the tuning pin anti-clockwise in order to loosen the string. And once again, I'm loosening and unwinding the string from the tuning pin with my hands. And once again, I need to straighten out that hook at the end with a needle wrench so that I can slide the string through the hole. So before I can straighten out the hook at the end of the string, I do need to straighten out the string around the tuning pin so that I can slide some length through so that I can have enough length for me to push out the hook at the other end so that I can straighten that out with a needle wrench like this. So here I am removing the strings at the ball end side. So what I did after that was just to give it a nice good clean. And here we have the auto harp all nicely cleaned. I made the mistake of not removing the anchor cover, which is that shiny chrome plate, before removing the strings. Had I done so, it would have made removing the ball end of the string much easier. And as you'll be able to tell, this string anchor bar is not attached to the body of the auto harp whatsoever by any screws, because the tension of the strings would have held in the anchor bar securely. So that is the auto harp with the chrome plate and the anchor bar removed. And as you can tell, the anchor bar is not attached whatsoever to the body of the auto harp with any screws. It's just held in place by the tension of the strings. Next, I'm just fitting in the new fine tuning system string anchor bar. And as you will be able to tell, it just slotted in without the need for any screws. And I didn't use any screws in order to install that fine tuning anchor bar onto the auto harp. As well as that, once it's slotted in, I made sure that as per the instructions that I pushed it to the very far left of the slot there.
After that, at the ball end of each string, we have a little tail that's coming out by about 5 millimeters or so that needs to be trimmed off. So here, for each string, I'm using a pair of wire cutters in order to trim off that tail because that amount of length needs to be taken off so that the ball of the string can sit snugly in the cam of the fine tuning system. So there it is, the ball end of the string with a little length of tail having been trimmed off. And here I am doing the same for another string. And now with the little length of tail at the end of the string there removed at the ball end, then the ball itself of the string sits snugly in the concave of the cam. I decided to make my own string holder that will hold all the strings together but as well as that keep them separate so that they do not tangle with each other and I'm making this string holder out of a coat hanger and some string. I'm just making a loop for each of the strings so for this string holder I needed to make 36 such loops for each of the 36 strings and as well as that because I had to attach this line of loops onto the coat hanger, I made additional loops. So what I'm doing now is that I'm just looping the string back on itself so that each loop is able to hold one string. Having made that line of 40 different loops of string, I'm just attaching that line of loops onto the coat hanger. In order to make sure that the line of loops doesn't slide off the position, I'm attaching that line of loops onto the coat hanger using ordinary wire fasteners. And here it is, with all the strings individually held in position by each of the loops so that they do not tangle with each other. So now I'm just threading the bolt into the cam of the fine tuner. And once I've done that, I'm fastening that cam using that bolt into the string anchor. The cam itself needs to sit fairly high up in the thread of bolt near the head of the bolt, because otherwise if it's fairly low down, it makes fine tuning more difficult. So here we have all 36 fine tuners fitted onto the string anchor. I'm feeding the end of the string through so that it has sufficient length in order to wind that end tightly around the needle pliers so that we have that nice shepherd's hook. And I'm applying a lot of pressure onto that end there so that we have that nice curve. And then after that, we need to pull the string down so that that hook catches against the hole in the tuning pin and it needs to catch so that it curls round in a clockwise direction. So once it's done that, once it's wrapped itself round clockwise around the tuning pin, then we can turn the tuning pin clockwise in order to tighten the string. That end of that hook, it's curling round clockwise as well. And as I'm turning the tuning pin, I'm making sure that the actual wire is wrapping around downwards from the level of the hole towards the base of the tuning pin so that it does not wrap round on itself. So once I've, what I'm doing now is that having threaded the string through the hole in the tuning pin and having fed through a length so that it'll allow me sufficient length to form that hook at the end there, I'm just pinching the very end three or four millimeters of that string and then winding it very tautly round the end of the needle pliers there. And once we have that nice shepherd's hook, we need to just pull the string through so that it catches against the side of the tuning pin at the opening of the hole of the tuning pin in such a way that it wraps around clockwise.
So here we have all the strings all nicely installed with nice hooks at the end of each tuning pin so that they wrap themselves around the tuning pin clockwise so that they do not catch on our sleeves. So the next step now is to remove those number markers I'm just feeling along the line of the bolt head just to find out the ones which are low and the ones which are high. And if they are high, then we need to lower them by tightening the bolt clockwise so that they decrease in height. And where the bolt heads are slightly low, then we need to increase the height of the bolt head by loosening them at strings for the bottom C and as well as at the bottom A and the A sharp, that the cam is actually quite a bit lower than all the other cams. And so the result of this is that as regards those strings, the bottom C and the bottom A and A sharp, then they are not on the same level as the other strings. And this rose because I did not make sure that the cam was sitting at the same positions on the thread of the bolt for these three fine tuners in particular. So for that, I had to remove the fine tuners for these three strings again and refit them again so that the cam sat at the top of the thread of the bolt near the bolt head. So here I am tuning the strings. So what I've done is that I've just tuned them with the tuning wrench at the tuning pins. I have not tuned them with the fine tuners whatsoever because at this stage we don't want to use them just yet. We want to wait 24 hours for all the strings to stretch. Once they've done that, then we retune them using the tuning wrench at the tuning pins. And then once we have those tuning pins tuned to the correct pitch, then we can use the fine tuners to fine tune them if they need to be fine tuned. So now I'm just fitting back the chrome anchor plate. And next we need to reinstall the cord bars. And after that, we need to reinstall the quad bar cover. So there we have it. We now have the fine tuning system installed on the auto harp. So that is all for this video. I hope that you have found this information useful and interesting. If you do have any suggestions, comments or feedback, then do leave them down below. Otherwise, in the meantime, until next time, have a nice day.